Studio One 6.2 just dropped, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you my favorite features inside of the new update. But first things first, we have to address the elephant in the room, and that is Persona's Sphere is no longer called Persona's Sphere anymore. It is now Studio One Plus. Now, from what I gather and what I understand, nothing is changing to the whole Studio One Sphere experience. They just renamed it to Studio One Plus because a lot of people were confused on what they actually got inside of Persona's Sphere and they want Studio One to be the head of it all, and everything else is underneath that. So it's Studio One plus all the additional software. So if you are a Studio One Sphere member like myself, then don't worry about anything being changed. Everything's the same, just the name is being changed. So now that I got that out of the way, let's get into Studio One 6.2 and I'll show you my new favorite features inside of the new update. So the first thing that I just cannot ignore is the editing in takes now. So if you don't know or don't know how to use the takes folder, you can come down here to the little gear icon and click takes to layers. And what happens here is every time you record over the same part, it creates a new take underneath it. And you can open that up with a little hamburger icon down here where it says expand layers. Now we have all of these layers. And what you could do is you can drag a certain section and then everything gets sent up to here. So all of these are three different takes that I had. And I wanna pick the best part from each take and then have it automatically be sent up here. So I can just select each part from each take and then I am good to go. It even automatically adds my crossfades. Now this is nothing new inside of Studio One, but there is some new features right inside of the takes section. Before, this was the only tool that really, really had access to. Now you can actually select a couple different tools, like you can cut certain sections out of it if you want to. You can have a select a region if you want to. You can erase certain sections of each take. And this just wasn't something you were able to do before. Super handy, and it just makes my workflow that much faster. Another thing I can't ignore is the auto zoom inside of Studio One. A few other DAWs have this, but this is the first time I've seen it inside of Studio One, and it's just kind of cool. So if you come up here to this section, it says toggle auto zoom. It's just that little icon, you can click that, and what it'll do is it'll automatically auto zoom no matter where you are inside of your DAW. So if I just double click here, it zooms me right into that section, and then I can just maybe pull up the mixer, and then I can zoom out of the mixer, and everything gets automatically zoomed here. And if you click and hold, you can auto zoom horizontally, auto zoom vertically, or auto zoom full. So you can have it just automatically zoom vertically if you want to. And right now I am manually zooming. And when I manually zoom like this, this automatically gets turned off. So I'll just go back to auto zoom and then I'll open up the respace and I maybe I can make some changes here. And then I will just close the editor and then everything gets automatically zoomed back to normal. This isn't the world's greatest feature. It saves a bit of time and it's kind of nice not having to hold control and use the scroll wheel all the time. But I probably will still continue to use that because I am a creature of habit and I just found a really quick way to do it. And I don't think I'm going to be using the auto zoom feature that much, but I'm going to give it a shot. The next thing I want to bring up is the color of notes inside of the MIDI region. Here we have bunch of different colors here. And now the color of the note is dependent on what note it actually is. But you can actually come up here to note color and you can change this section here. And we've always been able to change the note color. So like for example, to velocity. So the more velocity it is, it changes colors. Very, very similar to logic. But here, we can actually now change it to scale. And what's really cool here is if we go over to the scale section and we click OK on the scale, and then we decide to turn it into a C major scale. Now what happens here is if there's a note out of place, it'll actually turn red. So let me turn the scale off for a second so that way I can actually select a wrong note. Look at this. It's red, and it's letting me know that it's in the wrong key. I have it in the C major scale, and this is now red. Everything else is blue except for the obvious wrong note. I could just quickly fix that. And now with this check mark on, I actually cannot hit a wrong note at all. If you don't know much about music theory, this is a super, super handy tool. And if you do know a lot about music theory, it's just really nice to be able to click on a scale and just drag in an arpeggiator. It's really, really handy. And now I can actually write in my own arpeggios and then use the color feature to figure out if I have any notes that are in or out of the scale. Definitely something worth trying out. Now the next thing I wanna bring up is the pointer controls inside of Studio One. This is actually really handy. If you've ever noticed, I like this workflow, but if you've ever noticed when you hover over a note, right in the middle, selects the note. Just above, and you can actually adjust the velocity if you want to. And just below, cuts the note. Now, every now and then, when you're in the MIDI region here and you're trying to 
you know, drag stuff around, all of a sudden you realize you're cutting things that you don't want to cut or you're adjusting the velocity of things that you don't want to adjust and it just starts to become a pain. You can actually come up here to the pointer tool now, click and hold and actually select basic. So now it's just a basic pointer. No matter where I am, it doesn't change that tool for me at all. And then I can manually select the different tools that I need using the numbers pad here. But to be completely honest with you, I'm probably going to stay with the extended just because I really like being able to go like this and like this and like this and never having to change my tools at all. It automatically changes them. Now there's a little bonus tip here for you. This has been in Studio One for a while, but I just wanna share it with you. If you do wanna change your tools quickly, you can use the middle mouse button the scroll wheel is actually a button. Select that, and then all of these tools get to show up. And the new basic arrow tool is in this tool section as well. So if you want to use the cut tool, you can use the cut tool, and then I can go back to the pointer tool. Pretty handy. Now the next thing I want to share with you is the end marker. But before I get into that, if you've been enjoying this video so far, you're probably going to love my free Studio One presets that I have. They're down in the description below. There's a couple of vocal presets and a couple other really cool presets. You just drag and drop them right into Studio One, and they're completely free. So get your presets down in the description below. You're definitely not going to want to miss those. I use stock plugins inside of Studio One, and they sound amazing because Studio One is super powerful. Definitely go check those out. So now the next thing I want to show you is the end marker. And we've always had markers inside of Studio One, but now the end marker is actually a bit more powerful. If you come here to the hamburger icon and click on marker, you can see that there's a start and there's an end. We can just drag this end to wherever we want in the song, wherever the end of the song is. And for now, I'm actually going to put it right here just before the drop. And now if I right click this, I can click stop at marker. Now what this is going to do is it is going to automatically stop the song entirely once it reaches that marker. Instead of continuing on into infinity or going back and playing from the beginning if you have your loop function on. And there it is. It stopped. Pretty handy. Probably not going to use it a whole bunch, but it's definitely nice to have. Now, one other honorable mention is the event effects folder inside of Studio One. They just added this to where if you have any event effects, for example, Melodyne is one, you can have it directly into an event effect folder. You can just come down here to browse, up here to effects, and then event editors. And any plugin that you use for your events, for example, Melodyne, is all right inside of that folder. Just a simple workflow hack. It just makes life just that much easier. And now one more thing I want to share with you is the polarity buttons inside of the mixer channels. So if we open up the mixer here, you can come over here to the gear icon and then you can have input controls turned on. And we have the polarity switches here. And what's really cool is before you'd have to turn one on and then turn the other one on. But now they're linked. So when I select it, both of them turn on because that's probably what I want to do anyway. Now I can hold shift and then select one. If I just want one and not the other, I can totally turn that on or off. But by default, they are linked together, which just saves a ton of time. There is a ton more features that I just can't get into in this video. I will leave them all down below, but those were the most notable for me and the things that I was most excited about. Overall, not a bad little update. Now, if you liked this video, you're going to love my Studio One Saturday series, where every single Saturday, I drop a brand new video showing you something awesome inside of Studio One. That entire playlist is right over here. You can just click on that, and you can go right through that playlist, where I show you some awesome tips and tricks inside of Studio One. And make sure you get your free Studio One presets down in the description below. You're going to love it. I'll see you in the next one. Now, go create.